So please, hey, Fatima, please uh, open your uh, give your opening comment first. Yeah, uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, everyone. So I'm here to, uh, I'm going to lead the discussion about our chapter about the chapter six, which is selecting employee and placing them in job. So uh, in this chapter, we are not only going to talk about smart people when it comes to hire people, but we will also discuss that they are much more qualities that we need to consider. And I have prepared a few questions that we are going to discuss later on. So I'm going to ask the first question and I will call everyone one by one to answer the question. Are you guys ready? Really? Yeah. Okay, for the first question, uh, the study suggests us if we ask if we want successful employee, we should hire people who are both smart and conscientious. So please explain. Uh, please let me know the differences between being smart or intelligent and conscientious. Also, which factor that you think is more useful and needed in a work environment? I think. Um, Fiona can help me to answer this if you want, Fiona. Okay, so being smart is about how much and how quickly someone uh, could learn something new. It's not only about what someone already knows. And being conscientious is about finishing what we already start as it is the person's responsibility, not about doing the right thing. Uh, and in my opinion, both factors are needed and useful in the work environment. Firstly, because the technology is getting advanced day by day, which might be able to give impact to the work system and mechanism later on. Therefore, being smart is needed because it means someone has this capability to learn much and quickly so that they can adapt better toward this change. Besides that, being smart followed by conscious conscious consciousness will be greater because someone will not only learn and adapt to things, it means that person will also finish what they have started so every goal or objectives could be achieved. That is why, in my opinion, both factors are useful and needed as both of the factors complement each other. Is that all? Okay, thank you, Fiona. So I think I believe everyone here have heard about these two words more than a lot as well. Uh, but to sum everything up, I do agree with uh, Fiona that both factors are very needed in our environment. So we live in a world based on a technology, technology, and in order to understand the uh, fast-growing technology that we have now, of course, we need someone who is smart. And someone who is working in organization, then it's a mandatory for people to uh, not only being smart, but also, but also being wise. So the those three also working together to balance things. So, I mean, if you have a high AQ or smart, it can lead you to deeper into an unconscious life because smart people generally believe that they are right. So they strongly prefer the uh, version of reality instead, instead of considering other opinion. And surely sure, this reduces the motivation to be open to new and unknown possibility it cements fix uh, fixed habits and belief in a place as well so that's why uh, the conscientious trait is uh, needed in here so mind and a good trait are needed in working of working in a good harmony thank you Fiona for your answer uh, I think we can uh, move to the next question since we only have Fiona in here so the next question is, please identify the elements of the selection process and explain how many steps that we have in a selection process. Um, okay, so the elements, the elements of the selection process is 
maybe the personal selection which true personal selection organizations make decisions about who will or will not be allowed to join the organization and for the selection process there are five steps um, namely screening application and resumes to see which meet the basic requirements of the job and then testing and reviewing work samples to rate the candidates abilities Next is interviewing candidates to select which candidates that are most desirable and getting known to the candidates. After that, checking references and background to verify that the organization's information is correct. And lastly, making a selection to select a person to receive uh, the job offer, which usually done by supervisors, teams, and other decision makers. Okay, Fiona, thank you for your good answer. I think I have the same question as Fiona, as I believe everyone here need to know the selection process that which consists of five thesis aspects or steps. So in order to minimize error, error in employee selection and placement in the future. Thank you once again, Fiona. And then we can move to the next question which is how does an organization decide which of the uh, task placement that have been mentioned by Fiona beforehand to use and in order in what order? Mm, I have short answer for this question where some organizations simply repeat a selection process that is familiar. If members of the organization underwent job interviews, they conduct job interviews asking familiar questions. However, what an organization should do is to create a selection process in support of its descriptions. That's all. Okay, thank you Fiona for your answers once again. And I think since I believe Fiona have understood this material quite better, I think we can move to the next one, which is define ways to measure the success of a selection method. method. Okay, so there are five measurements. First is the reliability which indicates the method is free from random error, so will result in consistent measurements. Then valid, which means that performance on the measure, such as test score, is related to what the measure is designed to assess, such as job performance. And then um, the valid is divided into three more categories, which, which is criterion related validity, which shows a correlation between test scores and job performance scores. After that, we have content validity, which shows consistency between the test items or problems and the kinds of situations and or problems that occur on the job. And lastly, the construct validity, which establishes the test actually measure a specific construct such as intelligence or leadership ability, which is presumed to be associated with success on the job. Next, we also have generalizable, which means it applies to more than one specific situation. Besides that, the measure have utility, which means it provides economic value greater than its cost. And lastly, should meet the legal requirements for employment Mm. Uh, Fiona, can you please help me uh, ex uh, re-explain about the validity for once more? Mm, the validity means that performance on the measure, such as test score, is related to what the measure is designed to assess, such as job performance. And the validity have three more category, I can say. First is criterion related validity, then content validity, and lastly construct validity. Okay, thank you, Fiona. So the question was define ways to measure the success of selection method, method, and a requirement and a selection process is successful when it meets its objective, such as selecting qualified candidates for the position, managing the candidates' uh, pipeline, and minimizing turnover rates. And using the concept that the Fiona have just mentioned, uh, such as a real uh, a re reliability and a valid, uh, validity, and etc. 
uh, she'll be in a using interview as an effective and selection technique. And thank you once again, Fiona. Okay, uh, after mentioning those technique, then there are two kinds of researcher, researchers are possible for arriving at the criterion really, uh, validity, validity and which one of those that is more time consuming and difficult in your opinion, but also is the best measure of validity. Can you please uh, let me know the answer, Fiona? Or would you like me to re-mention uh, re the question? Repeat the question. Uh, I understand the question already. Okay, so the first one is predictive validation. Uh, in this research, uh, it uses the test scores of all applicants and looks for a relationship between the scores and future performance. The, the, the researcher administers the test, waits a set period of time, and measures the performance of the applicants who were hired. And then we have concurrent validation. It is a research that administers a task to people who currently hold a job, then compares their scores to existing measures of job performance. If the people who score highest on the test also do better on the job, the test is assumed to be valid. And the one that is more time consuming and difficult is predictive validation, but we have to keep a note that it is the best measure of validity. Okay, so in conclusion, there are two kinds of researchers, a research which is predictive validation and the second one, is the current validation and which occurred uh, according to Fiona answer, the predictive validation is more time consuming and difficult. Okay. Thank you, Fiona. And the next one, uh, as you know, nearly all, all employer gather, uh, gather background information on applicants at the beginning of the selection progress. And as a manager, I believe you need to know which common method used for selecting human research is more beneficial for the company. So can you please explain each method that have been present on our book and which one that you think is more efficient and effective? Mm, so... Nearly all organizations get their information through employment applications and resumes. These methods are inexpensive and an application form standardizes basic information received from all applicants. The information is not necessarily reliable because each applicant provides the information. These methods are most valid when evaluated in terms of the criteria in the job description, references, and background checks help to verify the accuracy of the information. Next, employment tests and work samples are more objective. And to be legal, any test must measure abilities that actually are associated with successful job performance. Employment tests range from general to specific. General purpose tests are relatively inexpensive and simple to administer. Tests should be selected to be related to successful job performance and avoid charts of discrimination. Lastly, interviews. It is uh, widely used to obtain information about a candidate's interpersonal and communication skills and to gather more detailed information about a candidate's background. Structured interviews are more valid than unstructured ones. Situational interviews provide greater validity than general questions. Interviews are costly and may introduce bias into the selection process. Organizations can minimize the drawbacks through preparation and training. And I think the more the most efficient and effective is interviews because by doing an interview, you interact with the person person the interviewee. So you can see how they answer to your question, how they behave how the gesture when they talk to you and so that you can make a conclusion based on that. 
Okay, so the most effective one, according to Fiona, was uh, interview because by interviewing someone that are supposed to be your candidates, you can interact with them through personal and you can define them in a real base through that communication that you have done. Okay, thank you, Fiona. So we can gather objective data through one or more employee tests, for example, is interview, just like what Fiona have mentioned, which is the uh, one of the effective way to, to gather in, uh, bigger information about the candidates. But before going deeper to the discussion, uh, can you please give me a brief explanation about what are employment tests and why do employer use pre-employment testing? And can you please also help me to describe major types of employment tests? Uh, okay, so employment tests are one of the objective way to predict the abilities of work and talent of a person so that it can match with a position in the company. It is important to have the employment test so that the HR team of the company can know whether someone is the best decision for that position or not. It is similar like when we want to buy something, we are not only buy it, but we also check whether it is a good product or not so that we are not termakan iklan. Um, so, it, this is also similar with that um the the with okay, I continue so um so the HR team can finally make the best decision about someone that will be the worker or hold a position in the company. And, and then the major types of employment tasks are divided into two. First is aptitude tasks, which assess how well a person can learn or acquire skills and abilities. In the realm of employment testing, the best known aptitude test is the general aptitude test battery used by the U.S. Employment Service. And then achievement tests, which measure a person's existing knowledge and skills. For example, government agencies conduct civil service examinations to see whether applicants are qualified to perform certain jobs. Okay, Fiona. So basically, these tests were made to assess an individual fit within an organization, just like what Fiona said, supaya nggak termakan iklan. So of course, there is no guarantee that the recruiter will be able to pick up the most suitable candidates for a vacant position by using a battery of tests and by spending huge amounts of money. But in most cases, employment tests will able to separate the medicare one from the bright candidates and established beyond doubt whether the chosen few will meet the requirement of the job or not. So to be useful, the employ, uh, employer needs to deploy a number of tasks followed by a carefully planned interview. Thank you, Fiona, for the nice answer. Okay, and the next one, uh, can you please discuss how to conduct effective interview in your uh, opinion. Uh, so the interviews should be narrow, structured, and standardis standardized. It should identify job requirements and create a list of questions related to the requirements. <coughs> Interviewers should be trained to recognize their own personal bias and conduct objective interviews. Panel interviews can reduce problems related to interviewer bias. Interviewers also should put candidates at ease in a comfortable place that is free of distractions. Patients should ask for descriptions of relevant experience and job-related behaviors. The interviewers also should be prepared to provide information about the job and the organization. Besides that, in my opinion, the interviewer also 
has to know their position. Like they are the person who searching for a candidate, so they have to be um to encouraging be, to. Hmm? Oh, you can continue it's, your work. To to to, I mean to realize their position that they are bigger than the the candidates. Do you understand what I mean? Oh, can you please oh. repeat once again? Ah, uh, the interviewer should know that should they have the people. dominant position, so uh, they don't feel like um they are lebih rendah. Oh, uh, okay. I will try to make a conclusion from your words. So I will repeat your first answer, which is interview should be narrowed, structured, and standardized. Which interview should identify job requirement and create a list of questions related to the uh, requirement. And aside from making at ease in a uh, the candidates in a comfortable place, the interviewer need to know their places as well, so they uh, they will still giving some kind of um uh, to let the other party know that they have a higher position okay okay so the last one uh, can you please explain how employee carry out the process of making selection decision Uh, the organization should focus on the job effective of finding the person who will be the best fit with the job and organization. This includes an assessment of ability and motivation. Decision makers may use a multiple hardware model in which it's stage of the selection process, eliminate some of the candidates from consideration at the following steps. At the final steps, only a few candidates remain, and the selection decision determines which of the few is the best fit. An alternative is a compensatory model in which all candidates are evaluated with all methods. A candidate who scores poorly with one method may be selected if they score very high on another test. Okay, Fiona, thank you for your answer. Um, I think that's all for our discussion. And thank you so much for Fiona for answering all the questions that has been given. Um, but before that, can you please help me to make a conclusion of what we have been discussed before? <clears throat> so in conclusion, when 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 uh when we want to hire someone we should considering many factors uh, maybe from the first thing that we already discussed before about being smart and conscientious we need to see whether the candidates have that factors in them or not. We also need to familiar with the steps in the selection process so that if we understand it clear and better, we can conduct the selection process in very better and efficient way. Eh, very effective and efficient way. Besides that, we also can um, use several validity tasks which is either predictive or concurrent validation. And also we need to focus on the job objective to finding the person that will be the best fit with the job and organization so that we have to be careful and not in a rush when we decide something before. Okay, Fiona, thank you so much. I think uh, before, uh, before we are going to close this discussion, um, I think hiring decisions are about finding, uh, we have discussed that hiring uh, decisions are about finding the people who will be a good fit with the job and the organization. And this discussion will, uh, discussion will help us to formal, uh, familiarize 
we as we ways to minimize error in employee selection and placement and we also have discussed that it start by describing the selection process uh fiona have explained it before and how to evaluate a possible method for carrying out the process and it then takes an in-depth look at the most widely used method on uh, application uh, application and resume employment test and interview also we also have discussed about uh, why uh, why is the employee uh, we also have discussed why the employment tests are important and the types of employment tests as well i think that's all for me and thank you once again for fiona and sir adi for letting me to lead the discussion Discussion today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, okay. it's good discussion. Even only there are only two people yeah, involved in the discussion. So, yeah, the, I think the, the the topic has been uh, has been talk, has been discussed very often. Yeah. So every company uh, needs people. So when they need people, of course they must be selection. Yeah. Select the people, and of course you you need the best your best people. Yeah. Yeah, as my, uh, as has been said by Fatima, so you need uh, smart and wise people, so right? Yeah, well, yeah, smart what? Smart, yeah, not clever. Yes, clever and smart is different. So yeah, everyone needs a smart people. Yeah, smart people and good uh, people with good conduct, so right? With good conduct, yeah. So like, uh, so the the people must have uh, emotional question and intelligence questions right? IQ and IQ right? and also spiritual questions. So there are, there are three things that uh, people must have that was IQ, EQ and IQ right? IQ intelligence question and then emotional question and spiritual question. Yeah. So when your people have three uh, three these things, of course you you have uh, you have, uh, your company will run well so right? because you have good people, yeah. Not only smart but also good and wise, yeah, and spiritual, right? Yeah, everything is done is on the religion move norms, right? And then so when you would want, to, you must also do select or do selection, yeah? so you must have good uh, selection process. So the first you must you must what you must do screening application, yeah, and resume, and then and then testing and reviewing work samples, right? It's according to the book. Interviewing candidate, checking returns and background, and making selection. So right? this is the first one. Oh, how to do selection? Yeah. So maybe you want you want to run advertisement in newspapers, right? Or everything, yeah, everywhere. And then you know, some people send their yeah their certificate to the and resume or the application letters, right? And then you must screen. You must do screening, application and resume. You read the yeah those. The, the application and the resumes, yeah. And then you must testing and review the data and then the, the work samples, etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. Yeah, this it is the selection, yeah. So someday, so I want to ask you, which is better to have people from you know, from within or from outside? Do you want to get you know, your people internally or externally? It is better inter internal source or external source to get your people to fill the position yeah. in the company. To, to what? Uh, is it with uh, with your paper internal source or external source to get your people for filling the position? Hmm. I think we could combine the two external and internal because with the internal one we can conduct information that will closely related to the job from inside of the company but from the external one we also can gain um, new and fresh candidates to fill in the position so it, we can combine the two sources in my opinion so the the, the strength of the um, internet yeah please. In my opinion, I think it's more cheaper and faster to rec uh, rec uh, recruit 
recruit staff internally than it is externally. Mm. As it, um, I think by required uh filling the vacant space, uh, vacant job position, mm. uh, by the internal staff, mm. it also can be, um, reward for them yeah. that have already worked with us before. Yeah. And it's we also know what kind of people that we have already faced right now, mm -hmm. and we can see their loyalty more than the external one. Okay. Yeah, so that's right. So what to answer are right, yeah. So some some company like to have internal equipment and some others like to have external equipment, yeah. But at the, the strength of the internal, so we have know the conduct yeah, of the people, yeah. So we, we, because we uh, we open meet the people yeah, in our company, so, right? so we can we have known the, the conduct. It is the, the strength and cheaper, so that inexpensive, yeah, right? Because we have we have not we have not everything, so, right? But still it's it's more yeah, it's more expensive than internal, yeah. But if if we want to get new insight, yeah, you had better to do external equipment, so that when you have internal recruitment, you will get, uh, you'll get new insights so that from other people. Yeah, uh, it's the strength of the external recruitment. Okay, where uh, where is Alexa? She she, she never comes to the uh, to this meeting. So is she, is she busy or, or Alexa? I don't really um, know because we hmm. don't get information from her. Yeah. We only meet her in this subject. So in other subject, I don't know what she yeah, is subject. going to. Yeah. Okay, so next week is Alexa, yeah? Yes, sir. Next week is yeah. her you, you, turn. You had, you, had, you had better tell here in, in this group, yeah? Say that Alexa turn it's next week, yeah? But for standing. I think she already in the group, sir. Huh? Where? Yes, she's yes. in our group. Yeah, that's right. So uh, you can tell her in your in the group, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So next week is a turn yeah to to the discussion. Yeah. Okay. Any question? So if there's no question, it is enough, yeah. What what do you have question, Fatima? Are, are you healthy, Fatima? So so you look at you look fresh to to the yeah. <laughs> You look fresh. I... Yeah. Are you do you feel alright tonight? Yes, sir. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So next one is this. So you 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 must bring the the internal list of HRM, yeah. I I hope and hope that uh you can bring the attendant list of HRM. Happen HRM. So we happen we happen build the attendant list, yeah. For 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 six times, is that true? Yeah. So on Wednesday we can we can we can write we can fill the attendant list of HRM. Okay. If there's no and questions, so I think that's all. Thank you very much. Yeah, there, uh, there are only two students coming, but this one is okay. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and the discussion runs very well. Yeah, so I think thank you very much for coming. So I hope and hope that this discussion can benefit all of us here. Yeah, you can take the advantage of this discussion. And someday you have a company, you can implement this theory of selection, so that, and how to place your people in, uh, yeah, in your company. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good night. See you later next week. Yeah, with the seven, the chapter seven topics, right? Training. Okay, thank you. See you later. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Good night. Have a nice rest. Yeah, have you had dinner? Have you dinner? Have you had dinner? Okay, good. Yeah, okay. I, I, okay, I, I leave my room. Yeah.